A. Allen, God's Man of Faith and Power. By special film transcription, we bring the Allen Revival Services into your home with witness to the miraculous wonders of God's power and promise. Join us now in worship under one of the greatest gospel tents in the world as we sing, preach, pray for salvation, and ask God's deliverance for the sick, the crippled, and the oppressed. gentlemen, it's my pleasure to present to you the man that God has mightily anointed with a miracle ministry, with a sermon designed to bring help, blessing, and deliverance to you, God's man of faith and power, Reverend A. A. Allen. Everybody happy? Yeah. If you're happy, will you say a hearty amen? Yeah. Raise both hands and say thank you, Jesus, for your presence. Yeah. Are you glad today for the presence of the Lord? Aren't you glad for what God's been doing under this great tent night after night? Do you know that you've seen the miraculous? How know that you've seen miracle after miracle night after night? God opening blind eyes, tumors disappearing before our very eyes. What is it? It's the presence of God in the midst of his people. But why is he here? Because he said if any two of us would agree touching anything here on earth, he would do it. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. So night after night, he walks up and down these aisles. People see him standing here on the platform with a long, shining, shimmering robe on. People have seen him as he walked down the aisle. Two ladies back here the other night come running down the aisle. One said, I had a huge tour, uh, water here. But said, Jesus came back and touched me, and it disappeared instantly. Here come another woman running down when the Spirit of God was moving. And uh, she said, I had a big uh, garter on my neck. She said, look, it's all gone. It's gone. I said, what happened? Why, she said she saw Jesus step off of this platform, walk back down the aisle, and he laid his hand on that garter. She said, look, it's all disappeared. It's vanished. Didn't know where it went, but when Jesus touched her, it was gone. Amen. Friend, I want you to know that Christ is under this tent. In the 18th chapter of Matthew, the scripture declares, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Listen to me. You there in your home, is there two of you there? Are there three of you? Why don't you join hands together and say, during this out and revival telecast, we're going to believe that Jesus, right here in our home, will do the same thing here that he does under the out and revival miracle big top. How many out of the tent today believe that God would do the same thing in the living room of the people that he does right here under this tent? Yeah. Why, listen, this may be hard for some of you to believe, but if it happened in Bible days, why shouldn't it happen today? Isn't the law the same yesterday today, and forever? In a recent campaign here, a whole host of angels were seen to pass over this ramp. Literally hundreds of people jumped to their feet almost in hysteria. Why? With their eyes, they had literally seen a supernatural being. 
Now, if you're a skeptic or if you're a modernist, it'll be a little hard for you to believe that the Lord is manifesting himself like this today. It'll be hard for you to believe that angels come in here to minister. It'll be hard for you to believe how that God uh, allows people to see his son. Why, one night there were scores of people come running down these aisles. No, it wasn't mass hysteria. It was reality. The one said, I saw Jesus. He was standing there beside you, Brother Allen. He hovered over around and about you with both hands stretched out over you. Here comes another woman. Here comes a man. They come with a score declaring, he's still there. He's still there. He's standing beside you. Who? Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Why? Jesus said, if two or more of us would gather together in his name, there am I in the midst of them. Jesus is under his tent. How many believe Jesus is here? Yeah. Oh, but somebody may say, I don't see him. It doesn't matter whether you see him or not. But in the second, he's here just the same. But in the second chapter of Joel, Joel described the revival. He said in the last days, he would pour out of his spirit upon all flesh. He said, your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. And your young men will see visions. So here is what is happening and taking place. God is showing such signs, such wonders and miracles to let people know this is the revival that's going to prepare the church for the glorious coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Under this tent, raise your hand this afternoon and praise the Lord for his mighty presence. Praise him for his power that my God is under this tent, that he walks up and down the aisle that he stretches forth his nail-starred hand and he heals the sick, the diseased, and the afflicted. Listen to me. A lady came into this meeting who saw a telecast recently in Southern California. We were praying for a little girl who was totally deaf. Suddenly the little girl's ear was opened. And do you know what that woman declared? That while she watched the telecast, while that deaf ear was open, she declared that she saw a great, gigantic, snow-white hand. It was the hand of Jesus. Reach right now. She saw this on television. What was it? She saw a vision while she watched our telecast. She saw the hand of the Lord reach down and touch that little girl's ears. Both of them were instantly open. What is it? It's Jesus at work. And there are times when even the Lord will allow people uh, to see a vision of himself. In Southern California, they hauled in a lady who was dying with cancer. She was mere skin and bones. They hauled her, I think, over 400 miles by ambulance, put her on the stretcher, and they hauled her in on this ramp. The woman was nearly and actually dying of cancer. I stepped off of this ramp. Many of you saw it. And I laid my hands on that woman dying with cancer. I said, oh, Jesus, lay your hand upon her. Touch her and heal her now. And you know what happened? The power of God hit that woman. The power of God hit that woman. And suddenly she got to her feet. She began to run up and down the aisles, healed of her cancer by the mighty power of God. And listen, while she was shouting and dancing, it looked as though immediately, in a few seconds' time, new flesh had came upon her body. Roses had come back into her cheeks. But while she stood here rejoicing and shouting, here come a little lady running down. She said, my Lord, Brother Allen, no wonder she jumped off of that stretcher. No wonder she has new flesh. No wonder she's healed. She said, when you stepped off of that platform and stepped down to that stretcher, she said, I didn't see him there when you stepped down. But said, when you stepped off of the platform, somebody else remained standing there right where you were. Said, I have a long white garment. Said, it was Jesus. Amen. And said, when you stepped down, he stepped right down behind you. And when you laid your hands on the woman dying with cancer, Jesus stretched out his hands and touched her too. And said, when he touched her, she jumped off of the stretcher, healed by the power of God. What is this? This is Jesus in the midst of his people. We've gathered together in his name to pray, to preach, to testify, to sing, and to believe God. And he is here today. And he is there in your home. And I'm announced this same Jesus that moves, works under the island miracle revival big top to move and work right there in your home. And listen, if Jesus isn't in your home, he'll come into your home. If you'll throw some of those whiskey bottles out and get rid of some of your beer bottles. You clean house and Jesus will come in. Your home is sort of like your heart. 
He won't come into your heart until you get rid of some of the trash. And if you want Jesus in your home, so that he can touch you and heal you, as he does thousands of people under this tent. Clean house. Yes. Amen? And just as you clean your house and get rid of the trash, you can clean your heart. Because I'm going to tell you this, if he won't come into your house, he won't come into your heart either. If you can't get him into your heart, you can't get him in your house. But you can get him in your heart. By buying your head, getting on your knees, saying, my God, Clean my heart, it's well as my home. And when you get your heart cleaned up, you'll have a house cleaning. Then Jesus will live with you. He will abide with you. He'll be in your home next Sunday. So when this television uh, telecast comes into your home, he'll be standing right there beside your television set. And when I pray, he'll touch you, just like he's going to touch people under this tent tonight. Get on your knees right now and say, God, save my soul. Blot out every sin. Make me a new creature in Christ and hear me. The same God who saves the sinner here will save you there. Yeah. Under this tent, bow your heads. You and your home, bow your heads. I'm going to ask God to save every one of you and let you get your, not only your heart cleaned, but clean house as well. Jesus, for the glory of God, oh Lord, save every sinner that heard this sermon. In Jesus' name I ask, do it now. Amen. Can you all say amen? Yeah. Amen. Sing it, everyone. This is your wife. That's my wife, yes, sir. She's supposed to be dead. That's right. She's not, though. I hope not. Doctors I... gave her six months to live. This is the last month. Uh-huh. She's supposed to be dying right That's now. Right man. now, yes, sir. She certainly looks like it. We better pray quick, hadn't we? That's right. Here's a poor little woman. She's had two operations for cancer. Doctors just closed up the incision the second time and gave her up to die. Said, take her on home. There's nothing more we can do. Right. Where do you go to church? We go to Brookline Church. Brookline Church? Brookline. Uh -huh. Catholic Church. Like you're Catholic. Yeah. God heals Catholic people, sure. too. God saves them, too. That's right. Some of the best people that come out of this tent are Catholic friends. And Catholics believe in the miraculous. This poor little woman is in such misery and agony. Oh, I'm so sick. You're so sick. I know I you are. I've been so sick for six months. Oh, yes. I just can't stand it any longer. You can't stand it no longer. No. You don't have to stand it any longer. I wish dear Jesus would help me. He's going to help you tonight. Oh, dear Jesus, please do this for me. Please. You hear this poor little woman? Please, Jesus, do this for me. She's been so sick. Oh, I'm so sick. And oh, yes, so she's hurting so bad. Oh, they yeah. hauled her all the way in here on this ambulance, but even God's going to heal her. Yeah. How many believe Jesus will do it tonight? <laughs> do you believe the Lord will heal you right now? Yes, I do. If I pray, do you believe Jesus will yes, answer my I prayer? Yes, I do. Are you ready to jump up from here and run with me? Yes, I will. Do you believe God's going to heal your wife? Sure. I always have faith. Do you always have faith? Will you promise God right now you will serve him? Yes, sir. Sure. You will live for him with all your heart. Oh, my. You will leave sin alone. Oh, you. You're going to serve him. Yes, sir. Sure. He'll heal your wife. Sure. And if Jesus will heal you, you're going to serve him the rest of your life. Yes, I will. You tell him so right now. Jesus. 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 I'll serve you. I'll serve you. I'll live for you the I'll rest of my life. I'll live for you the rest of my life. If you just take this cancer away. If you take this cancer away. You said you would do it, Jesus. Jesus, you said you would do and it. And I believe your promise tonight. And I believe your promise tonight, Jesus. <laughs>
Amen. Wouldn't you be happy if all that painted leaf? Oh, I would. I wouldn't know what to do. You wouldn't know what to do? No. Well, I'll tell you what you do, wouldn't oh, please? What? You'll jump up from here and act like all the rest of these people. I wish I would, dog. Oh. Are you ready? I don't have my shoes on. Well, don't hurt. You can dance without oh. shoes on. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many feel the presence of God? In the name of Jesus, I curse this cancer. I curse this death, thou devil of death. I bind your foul force. Go thou back to the pit from whence she came. Oh, you devil. Take your hands off of this woman. Take your hands off of God's property. Thou who would destroy her life, in Jesus' name I command you, go. Jesus, take the pain away tonight. Remove the cause of this pain. Let this little woman live, God, for your glory. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And by faith, I believe it is done right now. Now, do you? I don't know. Do you believe it's done? I guess it is. I think so. What? It looks like it don't hurt too much. It don't hurt now, huh? Is it quit that soon? Come on. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, there's your life. <laughs> Hallelujah. Take her on home. Take her on home. Everybody say amen. Do you believe the Lord's done something for her? Do you believe God's helped her? Let's give the Lord a big hand. Oh, bless the Lord. Your board says you're hopeless. That's right. Is that right? That's right. For six years. Yeah. A patch of disease of the spine, yeah. the legs and the arms, the nerves and all the bones. That's right. Is that right? That's right. I absorb from the head, from my head down to my feet, everything hurts. Clear down to your feet. Clear yeah. from the top of your head to your feet. Yeah, I'm half paralyzed. You're half paralyzed yeah. and you're hopeless. That don't make a bit of difference. No, not with God. Amen. Nothing doesn't not, make not, any difference. With, not with Jesus. Not with Jesus. No, not with God. Do you believe Jesus is going to heal you tonight? I sure do. How many believe Jesus is going to heal you? <laughs> now, I'm going to pray for you just like I did the other woman. And Andrew, you're going to get out of here. And me and you are going to dance around the tent together. Well, I'll dance with you. Will you dance with me? I will. Are you ready? Yes, I am. All right. Did you get... I can walk a little bit. You've got your shoes, all right. How many still feel the presence of the Lord? Isn't he here? You're going to feel something from the top of your head clear down to the bottom of your feet. Now I'm going to just say to you the same thing that Peter said to the man that was lame at the temple. Remember, he'd never walked. He'd never walked since he'd been born. And you remember what Peter said to him? What did he say? Get up and walk. And that's what I'm going to tell you to do. He said, rise up and walk. I'm going to tell you to jump up and run. You believe you can do it? I hope. You hope? I do, yeah. Well, yes, you believe you can. You'd better believe it. Everybody raise your hand and just silently pray with me. 
Amen. This cameraman over here is going to get a picture of you when you jump out of here in midair. But he's going to have to be fast, isn't he? How many believe God with me? Lord, you've never failed us. Thou canst not fail us now. God, you've always stood by our side and confirmed your word. We lay our hands on this man in the name of Jesus, cursing this disease that leaves this man so hopeless and helpless. Oh, God, forgive every sin he's ever committed. And heal this body of every pain, every sickness, every disease, and every infirmity. And let the power of God go from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. Heal this paralyzed body, Lord. Oh, God, grant it tonight. My God, do it tonight. I just believe God's going to do it. You feel him doing it? Don't you feel him doing it? In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It's leaving your hands, isn't it? In the name of Jesus. Jump to your feet. There's just something shaking him all over. I said, that's the power of God. Is that the first time you ever felt that? Yeah. That's the first time you ever felt that. I have it. funny feelings through me, but... That's the hey. first time you ever felt that. Now start running for the people. Start running. He's built for me up in glory And I heard about the streets of gold Beyond the crystal sea I heard about the angels singing The old redemption story and some sweet day we're gonna sing up there the song of victory sing it God's will for us to pause right here, pray for all of our television audience that may be helpless, those especially that are sick and diseased and bound by cancer. How many believe that God would set them free if we would pray right now? Raise your hand if you believe he'd do it. How many will join me in prayer 
faith right now that God will set them free. For all of you that watch this telecast in your home, I have faith for every one of you out there in television land that is sick and diseased and afflicted. And I believe that my God will heal you right now while the thousands of people under this tent pray. How many believe God will do it? And if you have a child that's sick and diseased and afflicted, bring them right here in front of your radio, or set her rather, in front of your TV screen. Somebody in a wheelchair, bring them in. Somebody with a cane or with crutches, or they have a hearing aid. If you've got a child that's sick, bring them in there. I'm going to ask God to touch them right now. And the same God that heals the people here will heal you there. If you've got a pain, put your hand where your pain is. It's not only our television audience, but everyone under this canvas cathedral tonight. If you're blind, put your eyes on, your hand on your eyes. If you have something wrong with your head, like migraine headaches, put your hands on your head. If you're deaf, put your hands on your ears. If you have cancer, put your hand where it is. And I'm going to ask God to touch you right now. Are you ready? Now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, reach out, Lord. Lay your hand upon the sick, the suffering, and the dying. Take cancer away. Remove deafness. Remove all sickness, all disease, and all infirmity for thy glory. Now, in Jesus' name, we ask it and believe you for it. And all the people said, Amen. Have you felt the Spirit of God? If you have, put your hand up and thank God for what he's done for you. You right there in your home now. If you felt the touch of God, raise your hand and thank God for what he's done for you. Amen. Now, friends, it's been good to be right back in your home. And it's nice every week to set this big tent right up in your town. That is, you've been able to come to this tent meeting without even leaving your living room. And next week, next Sunday, we want you to bring a chair right in and sit on the front row and see what God's doing on the heating ramp. And until then, I want you to read the greatest magazine published. That's the Miracle Magazine. You'll enjoy its 24 pages each month. There's always two pages under the Gospel Big Top, always two or four Miracles you'll see on your TV, 20 other great pages of miracles, testimonies of healing, faith-building articles that will bless you as thousands are being blessed. Your sample copy will be put in the mail tomorrow if you'll request it in a letter. And then remember, if you'll enclose a dollar in your letter and request it, we'll be glad to put your name on the subscription list. And this great magazine will come into your home the first of every month for the next 12 months all for just one dollar and then i'll send you free and post paid if you let me know this telecast has been a blessing to you our great book god will heal you it's god's guarantee to heal you perfectly permanently without the help of medicines drugs or surgery seven great chapters the same instruction that the thousands of people receive under this great tent each afternoon service. They are healed because we give them this instruction, because this instruction builds faith in their heart. Read it this week, and when we come back in your home next week over the same channel, right there in your home, you'll have faith to believe God for your healing and for your deliverance. And in your letter, listen, if you have a prayer request, a special burden, a special need in your letter, let me know what your need is. God says the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And we'll pray, and the thousands of people that come in the service will pray, and we'll pray you write us a letter and let us know that God has heard our prayers in your prayer and has sent the answer.